The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the April 21st, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Edge show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. <clears throat> yeah, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, <clears throat> we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We're going to go figure out what the bulls and bears, what the buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But much more important than that, and that's this. During this next 60 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on in, 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, we've got you covered there, too. You can always send me an email. Simple, steve at tfnn.com. But inside the subject heading, if you would be kind enough to put radio show question. And, of course, in our Tigers, then, well, any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to La Show. All the indices trading to the upside. Dow's up 227, about 7 tenths of a percent. S&P 24, 6 tenths of a percent. NASDAQ 100, only 4 tenths of a percent, or 52 points. Russell's up 1 in 7 tenths, or 36 points. Semi's up 54. Tranny's up 172. Gold's up 13 bucks. Silver is up 68 cents. You've got uh, leading the charge dollar-wise the upside. We've got Intuitive Surgical, 73 bucks, 9%. Mercado Libre, 28 bucks, nearly 2%. Azimil Holdings, 21 bucks, 3.5%. Signature Bank, 20. Lamb Research uh, is up 3% or 20 bucks. Netflix taking the big hit, so to speak, down 7%, 38 bucks. Google's off 20. Chipotle's off 20. Zebra Technology down 10. So there's some things to look at. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. So where are we going to begin? Let's begin, in essence, where we left off or close to where we left off yesterday. One of the things that you and I looked at is, uh, is it, it might have not been a different chart. It might have been the Dow. Could have, I don't know what it, what it was. I think it might have been the ES Mini. And what we were looking at here and what we were suggesting to you yesterday during the show was that we should expect and anticipate a bouncer bottom today. And why do we do that? Well, we know that in strong bull markets, and if anybody tells you we're not in a strong bull market, they're smoking something that isn't approved. We're in a bull market. And in bull markets, you typically will get these little two to four bar pullbacks. And that's exactly where we're at. Now, what we have to go make a determination of, is this just a counter trend rally or is this a Sig uh, is this a signal that the market is getting the ES mini or the S&P 500 is getting ready to take another leg higher? So to help us answer that question at this time, we may not have the answer yet, but we will know what to look for and what to watch for. We're going to switch over to another panel of charts out here. So let's see if we can do this. And now we're going to take a look at multi time frame charts for the ES mini. Let's go see what we know. We know on the monthly basis, upper left hand corner that uh, price has already exceeded the TD9 count top. And unless there's just going to be some chaos that takes place over the next, how many trading sessions do we have left in the month? Eight, nine, something like that? I'm not sure the exact, maybe five, six? Uh, chances are the signal coming from the monthly chart for the ES Mini is a strong momentum move to the upside. It didn't even have a hiccup when it created that TD9 count. And you know how well these TD9 count patterns work or the information that they provide us when they don't work, when they don't stall out price. There was not even a stall, not even a hiccup. So the monthly chart is screaming, I want higher price. Now, it doesn't tell us that that happens next month or what have you, but it's screaming, it wants higher price. The weekly chart, 
no topping signal, no bearish reversal candle. Certainly there's A to B equals CD patterns, but you have to have a bearish reversal candle to confirm that top. We don't have that in the weekly. Prices above the oscillator and change on the weekly and the monthly. It doesn't get more bullish with regard to those longer term messages for those charts. Now, we switch over to the daily time frame. In the daily time frame, we can see that if this is just a counter trend rally today, this is the area where it would stop. The area where it would stop would be that oscillator and change line, which is just a few points above where the ES Mini is trading right now. So there is that possibility. Now, on my e signal, on my Ninja Trader charts, that's what we're looking at right now. This has generated a new bullish structure daily profile for the ES Mini. The e-signal system hasn't picked that up, which is right. They're both right. We have to use this data that our systems generate for us. So we know that this could be just a counter trend rally. It could be. But if price closes over the oscillator and change line, chances are the ES Mini goes ahead and makes a run for the high. The exact number right now as we speak, as the oscillator and change line on the daily time frame is 41.54. Three points higher than where the ES Mini is trading now. So watch that because if price closes above that level, the signal, at least with regard to the ES Mini, is not to be short or at least expect that price is going to retest those highs. If not, take them out. That's its message. 30-minute time frame chart forms a nice uh, Rhodes momentum indicator yesterday. We were taking a look at that yesterday. That got retested at about uh, 2.30, 3 o'clock. And then it was the market just simply the ES Mini kind of took off from there. No topping signal here just yet on the ES Mini, none on the 60 minute. Uh, the 120 minute price had just simply pulled back to test its breakout support at the 41.19 level. We talked about that yesterday. You got TD nine count bottoms in the 240 and the five hour chart out here. You can see the 240 is now above its oscillator and change line. If it can close above 41.55, that'll signal move to 41.71. The five hour chart right up to that counter trend rally level. But if it can clear this area, that says 4174. So that's the ES mini longer term right now, monthly and weekly are uber bullish. Absolutely uber bullish coming from the uh, S&P 500. Doesn't mean we don't have some kind of uh, retracement that eventually begins. And is it now? It's possible. It's slightly possible. But again, if the daily time frame chart, if price gets above that oscillator and change line, that possibility becomes this was nothing more than your normal two day knee jerk reaction. Go back to your charts, folks, that things that are in your portfolio and take a look at those retracements and see if you have a two to four bar pullback out there. Just that one little technique might just totally change the way that you view charts out here. Now, let's go take a look at the NQ. In the case of the NQ, we're going to take a look at the monthly weekly the same thing same setup out here on a monthly time frame the nq still has a td9 count top that is present what will change that is if we see the month of april close above 13599.75 now we're about 300 points uh, 250 points above that right now of course that can be given up in a heartbeat but you want to watch 13599.75 if the nq closes above that at the month of uh, at the end of April, that's a bullish, very bullish signal. The weekly does not have any type of confirmed pattern in place right now. In fact, it's bullish. Price is above the oscillator and change line, just testing it. So that time frame is bullish. In the daily time frame, there is um, there's an A to B equals CD pattern. You can't see it in this small chart here. So that has been confirmed. That confirmed a few days ago with the Three River Evening Star. Price came back to support. It's above its oscillator and change line right now. It's headed back to its highs. That's the NQ. Oh, let's take a look at Apple. We'll be right back. We'll take a look at Apple. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. 
Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. Hey there, I'm Andy Arbertine with Tiger Precious Metals and Stones. Whether you're looking to buy and sell precious metals or trying to find the perfect diamond ring, I'm here to help. I have over 15 years of experience with diamonds and precious metals. You can call me directly at 727-329-8245, and I will personally answer any questions you have and help you find exactly what you're looking for. I will be your personal concierge in the metal and stone business. Give me a call today, 727-329-8245. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So if we take a look at uh, Apple, we were looking at the NQs as we went into that break out there. And what you can see is the low of the day inside of Apple is 131.30. The bottom of its daily profile is 131.30. Really, that's just how valuable these profile levels are for each of us out here. They help us. I mean, picture this chart, right? So just let's look at this chart here. Give me a second to uh, get my editor up. And let's just turn off those profiles. And we turn them off. And we're taking a look at this chart here. There's really nothing that I know of that would have told you or I. Well, there's one thing. We'll, we'll take a look at that next. But right now on this chart here, this chart, as it is plain, there's not anything out here that would have told you and I where Apple should find support. But yet the unfair competitive advantage comes when we turn on our profiles because it takes our field of play. And that's really what we're looking at here. A chart is nothing more than this palette is nothing more than our field of play. It's our golf course. It's our baseball field. It's our football field. It's our soccer field. And what we have here, which is great because of these tools, is in our case here, because we're playing a pricing game on this field, is trying to understand where support and resistance is at. These profile levels are extraordinarily important. They will provide us with a ton of information. Right now, <clears throat> we're just consolidating with inside the daily profile. Whichever side breaks, meaning they close above. So when I say break, I'm not referring to the intraday movement. I'm talking about the close of price. If price closes above 135.47, Apple should be on its merry ways back to the highs. Whereas if it closes below 131.30, it's uh, likely headed back to the lows of uh, March out here. 
Do we know which way it's going to break? No, but let's just say you were short and you were short the NQs as an example. You certainly want to understand what Apple is doing because of its weighting. It's not the only weighting, obviously, but you certainly want to be able to understand that. So I mentioned that there was two elements that we could take a look at that give us that unfair competitive advantage. One are the market profiles. The other is the oscillator and change line. Again, folks, don't replicate it. Just learn it. Just sign up for Mastering Probability, even if you do it for 29 days. Learn this tool. Apply it to your trading. You will find it also in, as valuable as possible. Take a look at where price pulled back to today. Now, you know, because you've listened to the show for a while, that when Stevie's line changes color out there, that we're going to expect price in that line to catch up to each other, catch up to each other and generate a very important message. Is this just a retracement back to support, and now I'm ready to head higher? That was the entire reason that I developed this, because without that line, I was making decisions that were clearly the wrong decisions. I know this for a fact, but when I put this out there, it became clear and evident. And right now, the signal from Apple is it has just pulled back. It has done the bullish test. So what Apple should do from here is Apple should at least go up and target the top of its daily profile at the 135.47. Now, I had mentioned that if Apple could close above 135.47, it would be on its merry way back to its highs. But because we also use the TD9 count, that helps us to establish objectively breakout and breakdown levels. And they are also key. So now that we have that additional piece of information, if Apple closes above 136.99, then it's back off to the races. But here's a great example of a couple of the tools that we use. You get to see them you know, in action live and then sit back and think about it. How would that have impacted any of the trading that you might have done today if you're an intraday trader out there? So that's a chart for Apple. Where do we go next with this? I don't know where we go next with this. Um, where do we go next with this? Because there's no questions yet. Oh, what, what, let me check my phone here. Uh, and, and we do have a question. This one's from Hector and Patty. And Hector wants to take a look at uh, – Hector makes a statement. The QQQ on a monthly looks stronger than the S&P monthly. So um, how am I going to compare that? I guess I could make a chart. So let's come up here and make a chart. And let's put in the uh, QQQs out here. And I, I, I'm, I'm in my mind while I'm – building the chart I'm trying to figure out how are we going to make a determination which one is stronger out there uh, so that's the cues let's insert the spies out here give me a moment to do that SPY we want to go ahead and make this a monthly we want this to make this a candle chart so there's our candle chart so we're just looking at uh, one on top of the other let's try to maybe equalize the, the frames here see if we can do that Grab it. There we go. And uh, so I would say, so here's how I would look at this, Hector, and that's this. We talked about, remember when we were doing, when I was doing the NQ out here, we're looking at the QQQ, same pattern is really in play. The Qs have to close above, I believe this is the TD9 count top week of January 2021. And so the Qs are going to have to close above 330.32, which they are above that level. But the the month is not over. And the spies, we took a look at the ES Mini on a monthly basis. That had already taken out. The TD9 count top, the bar following bar number nine, was last month. So, I, you know, stronger, they're both strong. But the spies right now have given the stronger momentum move message to the upside. And let's not discount, Hector, the fact that we may just begin seeing the global flow of capital coming into the U.S., and that's really important as well. During the market update, well, I'll just show this chart in case people didn't catch the market update chart. We took a look at this chart. And this chart is the U.S. compared to what's going on in the Shanghai over, over in uh, China, what's going on over in the Nikkei in Japan, what's happening in the Hang Seng in Hong Kong, what's going on in the DAX in Germany, and the FTSE in the U.K., and the important element about this is to see the outperformance of the U.S. versus these other markets. The only other market right now that is performing well is the DAX. But if you look at the Shanghai, this thing has been in a descending, trending market 
for decades out here. The Nikkei, nowhere near back to its highs. The uh, Hang Seng hasn't taken out the 2008 high. The DAX has. The DAX is performing pretty well, but the FTSE you can see. So it's it's important to understand this concept because what is it the traders are seeing? Because understand that these these wealth portfolios, you've, you're, you've got to get a larger picture of what's happening inside the market. Now, we've got that element. Then we can actually take a look at how these different markets, we've added a few other ones here, how they are performing both in our local currency as well as how they're performing in euros, yen, and pounds. The reason that we do this is because this is a way, it's one of the only ways, where we can try to track, not try, where we can track the performance of these instruments versus others and in the currencies to see if we who's, who's outperforming. Where is it? Because a bull market or a bear market, but a bull market is one where the market's rising in all currencies, all major currencies. The bear market, exactly the opposite. Well, here as we take a look at this, the DAX is actually the lead, the, the DAX, I'm sorry, the Dow, via the Dow Equity Future contract, is in the lead with regard to its rate of change. It's even above the S&P 500 hectare. Something to think about. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. The printing presses are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The U.S. deficit has risen 200 percent in one year with no end in sight. The markets are looking for an additional stimulus bill to get us through this once-in-a-generation pandemic. There is no free lunch, folks. The more stimulus dollars put into the marketplace, the less your dollar is worth each and every day. This is the time to protect yourself with a portion of your portfolio in the metal market. The Gold Report comes out each Monday morning. I bisect and dissect the dollar, silver, gold, the XAU, and the HUI. The Gold Report is a long-term hedge against the dilution of your buying power. The U.S. has put more than $6 trillion into the marketplace in the last six months, with more expected in the next few months. The market did and does need the stimulus, but it will have long-term implications on our buying power. The Gold Report comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to TFNN.com and order the Gold Report now. Protect your buying power. Order the Gold Report now. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
233, S&P 25, NASDAQ 100 up 60 points. Um, we've got a request inside the Tiger's Den to take a look at the Cassava Sciences. Ticker symbol there is S-A-V-A. So as we take a look at it, this is really an interesting set of chart patterns out here, Dan, uh, to, to follow. So first of all, yesterday's close was a close below the TD9 count. And um, so normally that would tell us about a strong momentum move to the downside. But then we would have to ignore truly a breakout session uh, when this gapped up on February 2nd with volume of about 76 million shares. So yesterday was also a test and rejection of that level. That was at 3206 on clearly much lighter volume. So from a, is this a swing point? No, but this is certainly pulling back to a breakout area. Now the breakout area on Sava, uh, just using our gap system out here, is 2353 to 3206. So how are we gonna make a determination if this is some kind of bottom? Well, first, if it's not, you should have support at 2996. That is the top of the weekly profile. If price were to close below 2996, I would say that's a signal of 2353 coming at you. So you could, if it's just a trade, enter it. And we'll go take a look at the short-term charts to see if the short-term charts justify that uh, concept as well. If we pull over the only other area that I can see on a daily basis, that's what we're really focused on. On a daily basis, if price is gonna move lower, it could pull all the way back to 1715. Now this doesn't have today's data on here. I don't know why it's not updating, but that's okay. We took a look at the other chart. That was fine. Price was trading below this hammer candle out there. That's typically not good. The oscillator and change line changed from green to red. That tells you it should at least, Dan, get a counter trend rally over the coming sessions. I don't know how many sessions, but just like we looked at uh, with Apple out there. So it's not out of the woods, but can we justify this is a bottom. It has a potential for a bottom, absolutely. And anything that has a potential for a bottom is also going to show itself on a short-term time frame chart. So as we take a look at Saba, as it was forming its low out here yesterday, it was doing it with a Rhodes Momentum Indicator signal. So that's the first thing. Price then consolidates with inside the profile, busts out of it to suggest a change in trend. Now, the real change in trend in Saba would not take place until price closed above its breakdown level. Currently, that's at 40.69. But does this look like it wants to continue to move higher? It does to me. It looks like we should see an A to B equals CD to the upside out here. But what you're really going to have to watch, you're going to have to watch that oscillator and change line. Because that oscillator and change line is red. And if price gets up and tests it, it's around 38, 31. I think, Dan, you're actually using the oscillator and change line. Uh, and so you'll know what to look at because a test and rejection on that says, okay, I'm not really ready to move much higher. So hope that helps you out with regard to cassava sciences. Hey, let's go out to Denver and speak with Ron. Ron, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Great, Steve. Uh, I'm just calling to I want to say what an amazing call you made. Last Friday, you said this market was in bar seven. You'd probably see eight or nine over the weekend. So you can expect the market to sell off the first couple of days of the week. The market sold off Monday, Tuesday, and then yesterday said it's going to rebound. It rebounds. I mean, that was just amazing. And, uh, you know, I, I, I took advantage. I bought some uh, puts on the IWM and Adobe and QQQ Friday. I came out yesterday, and now I'm long the arc. I went bullish on the IWM this morning. I mean, <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. But uh, I just wanted to say that was put on the fantastic market call you made. Well, thanks. All I am is the narrator, and all I'm doing well, really. <laughs> all, all, you, you, I, you read you read between the lines, which we can't do. No, but, I, uh, I I guarantee you, John. I guarantee anyway, you. I was wondering if you would give us a, a, a give me. I'm is it time yet on Viacom to get involved? V I A C. It's a V I A C. Is that it? Yes, Viacom. So let's go take a look at Viacom. But, but Ron, I guarantee you there's nothing I do that you can't do, and probably that you can't do better than I am. And I really am just narrating the charts, um, which is a beautiful thing, because if I'm just narrating the charts, you too can narrate the charts. But back to Viacom. <laughs> and and it, it really, and I, and I believe that. I'm, I'm being sincere about that. So, uh, but in the case of Viacom, the question is, has this bottomed? Here's what we know right now. We're below support on the daily, meaning profile-wise. We're below support on the weekly, 
meaning profile wise, and we're above the top of the monthly, but that could still be signaling that this is going to pull back to 2860, 2657. Let's look at our white background charts, see what kind of message. And I apologize because this is also not picking up today's activity. Um, but in this, in order for Viacom, so this is the daily time frame, in order for it to give you any kind of a signal of a bottom, we would at least want to see a close above its oscillator and change line. As of yesterday's data, that was at 4090. So it's going to change a little bit today. Uh, today we're printing at 4030. It's odds favor that this is still below that level. And so I would hesitate getting into a long position because we don't have any kind of a bottoming signal. Now, that being okay. said, that being said, 3621, let's see what the low was yesterday. It was uh, 3754. So 36, let me get the number here, 3621 is still open. That may be the area where price gets to that uh, Viacom uh, forms a bottom. So I would say lower price, 36.21 as an example, or a close above, I'd say 41 bucks would say, okay, I'm at least going to rally, and maybe the rally is to 46, maybe the rally is to 50.39, maybe it's a change in trend. We really don't know because we're looking to see, explore whether or not there's a bottom. Now, on a 30-minute time frame chart here, we can see as this was making the bottom, as it often does for a, a, a larger time frame, this was generating Rhodes momentum indicator signal. This was yesterday afternoon. It also got down to wave number seven, that's letter G out here. And as we take a look at this 30-minute chart and populate it right now, there is a TD9 count that went into effect, as you were calling it, 130. And that TD9 count was uh, right as it's approaching its breakdown level of 4067. So you can see here, all I'm doing is narrating the chart. I'm just narrating the chart, understanding where support and resistance is, understanding the bottoming and topping patterns are in place. And so price has now hit this 46 or close to this 4067 level resistance with a TD9 count. If, in fact, you see price close above the high of the day so far, which is 4047, that's going to tell us and signal to us on a 30-minute basis about a strong momentum move to the upside. However, there are a couple of, of a detour, potential detour spots. The one we talked about already at 4067, the one at 4024. You just need to know where the battle is. That is where the battle is to the upside. But if price can close above this high, it's promising for an additional rally. Is it a bottom? It would have the potential to be a bottom, I would say, if it could close above 4124. But then when we go back to that daily time frame, I don't remember the number now, about 4090. So what was this one, 40? Yeah, so I'd say close above 4124. It's got that potential for at least more of a rally, Ron, and up to 4620. If Viacom can close above 4620, then the answer to the question is, okay, then today was the bottom. Does that make any sense? Oh, fantastic. Yes, very much so, and I appreciate it. Okay, Thank so you very much. Are you, you bet. And thanks for the compliments. I appreciate it. Uh, just narrating the charts, that's all. And I, I want you to, I, I, the whole purpose, really, You're the whole too purpose. Humble. You're too humble. Okay, no, no, no. Thank you, sir. No, no, the whole purpose of doing this hour, quite frankly, and even the newsletter and providing everybody with all those hours of education is to teach you to do this. That's what we want to do here at TFNN. Ron, always good to talk to you. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today.
technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Testing, testing, testing. We good to go? I'm going to assume we're good to go. And we're back live here, folks, hopefully. Maybe in the den, somebody give me the high sign. So the charts we're looking at, perfect. Charts we're looking at here, we've got gold on the left-hand side, silver in the center, U.S. dollar on the right-hand side. So here's what we know about Goldilocks. One, yesterday we were looking at a new profile that was attempting to form. It did not form. You can see that. What we know about gold is it has broken out of its consolidation. When you break out of a consolidation pattern, it provides us with a chart. You don't see the charts, okay? It's always something, isn't it? Hey, that's because it's happening for you. Here's the charts now. So back to the left-hand panel, you've got gold. You can see the uh, consolidation. When you break through a consolidation, it offers us a projection, which we refer to as a measured move. It's equal to, or it can be greater than the original consolidation. So this suggests that gold is making its way up to the 1840 level. See. The, the, the only A to B equals CD, we can draw an A to B equals CD pattern in here now. It would look like this. Our A point is going to be down here on the day of March 31st. Our B point is going to be the high out here on April 8th. And the C point is going to be the low on the trading day of April 13th. So there's your A to B equals CD. Your one-to-one -one price projection gets you to 1804, the 1.272, 1827, the 618, 1855. Those become our target ranges. But because we've broken out of this consolidation pattern, odds favor that gold is going to go make a run for that 1840 level. Silver, as you can see, already has an A to B equals CD pattern. And today, silver has hit the one-to-one -one price projection level. That's at 26 62. Now, at the same time it's doing that, today silver is also attempting to form a new profile. I do not know whether this will take hold or not. I would say odds favor no, but I don't know that to be the case. What we do know right now is prices trading above resistance, where the sellers were, which is 26.24.
Now, price in silver here has made the D point with a wide ranging bar. Quite frankly, I don't care if it makes it a wide ranging bar, a small ranging bar. Just because you hit the one to one area does not mean the move is over. It doesn't. It doesn't. It's like a coin flip almost. It's like a 60-40, although I've never seen any current statistics on it. Instead, what you do is you wait for the cavalry to confirm a top. And that top requires some type of bearish reversal candle. Other than that, price will continue higher. So what we know about silver is at odds favor that this is going to target 27.14. That's the 11.272 level out there. Now, what's interesting about this set of charts here. So as you know, the U.S. dollar index bottomed a couple of days ago. It actually formed a TD9 count. This was back on the 19th. Yesterday was nothing more than a test of that key level of support of that. And there's a new profile that has formed. Now, the interesting thing about the new profile, it's at 90.993. And the low that price would need to close below is 91.02. So if there's a close below, so really what we would say here is that price would need to close below 90, 93 to suggest that the U.S. dollar index is going to pull back into the 90, 44 level. If it does that, it becomes very easy for you and I to see gold completing its measured move consolidation, silver to go to the 1.272 level. But what if it doesn't? What if that is a TD9 count bottom inside of, uh, of the U.S. dollar index and it's going to go approach the top of its profile area in the 91.77 and 91.90? So this is what we're dealing with here, kind of a little bit of a confusing message, I think, with regard to the way the U.S. dollar index is, is trading. But we can resolve that pretty quickly. And the way that we resolve that is we just simply go say, hey, how is gold trading in all the currencies? And is gold trading above prior highs? Well, if we take a look at gold in terms of U.S. dollars, the answer is yes. Gold in terms of euros, the answer is yes. Gold in terms of yen, the answer is yes. And gold in terms of pounds, the answer is close. It's very close to trading above the prior highs out here. So what this is communicating to you and I is this is a real move, at least as far as screens for other traders out there. So hopefully that helps you out with regard to gold. Let's go out to Ford Collins and speak with Mark. Mark, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you? How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Thanks for the call. And you want to take a look at the uh, semiconductor index? Yeah, the Fox, SOXX, or if you have another index you'd like to look at better that tracks that. Got um, it. Okay. So tell us what you're doing here and how I might be able to help. I am doing nothing right now. I'm watching it. I'm trying to determine if it's going to test the highs or if it's broken down and I'm waiting for a place to short. Okay. It's kind of, It's come down on pretty heavy volume. And it's going up on lighter volume. I was looking to potentially take um, a short when it gets up to that kind of 9.14 or 9 and 14 EMA area, which is about four points higher than where we are now. But I wonder what your thoughts are. So let me ask you this. If, if you knew that yesterday was, very, was bar number eight of a TD9 count, and the way that it's trading right now, it looks like that nine count is going to be in effect. Um, I don't know if that would change your thoughts on it. But yeah, with, regard right. socks, uh, with regard to the socks, let me pull over the white chart. Unfortunately, right now, the day's activity isn't being updated. So this white background chart shows bar number eight from yesterday. And as long, price, as, long as price closes below 443.76, which is pretty likely outcome, you'll have a TD9 count bottom. So you'll have, in essence, inside the socks, a valid bottoming signal. Um, let me actually go to the 30-minute chart here. I think the 30-minute chart will pick up the data. Yeah, so the 30-minute chart. So as the socks was doing that, making that TD9 count bottom, you actually had a TD9 count bottom on the 30-minute time frame chart, a Rhodes momentum indicator signal. And right now, price is above 430.35. On the 30-minute mark, that's the first level that price needed to close above in order to generate a, a bottoming signal, a change in trend type signal. Now here though, we can see that the bar that closed at 130 was actually the bar following bar number nine. So I wouldn't enter the trade right now because you have in effect a topping signal, topping pattern. Price could pull back into about the 426 level. That could be the place, that could just be the retracement. 
that would get you into the trade if you're trying to be that cute. I don't know if you are, but I'm, I'm at least trying to interpret the charts and the messages coming from the different time frames that we're looking at. Likewise, the other side of this case would be if you saw a 30 minute close above 431, 431.43, that would be a signal of price moving to 439.90. So just on the intraday basis alone, uh, knowing that there was a TD9 count, you know, is this just is this really just a trade? So you'd just be able to navigate it and and, and manage through it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do me yeah, a favor. Good info. Yeah. Um, why don't you hold on through the break, and we'll see if there's anything else that I can find for you on okay, SOXX. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Markets can rise and fall like the tides. Subscribe to Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, and you too can ride the wave. Basil Chapman is an authority in technical analysis. His Chapman Wave trading system has been helping traders identify trends and capitalize on momentum in the markets since 1984. TFNN invites you to test Basil's proprietary Chapman Wave trading methodology with a monthly subscription to the opening call newsletter for only $149. Your subscription to the opening call comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee, as well as daily market updates on key indexes, stocks, and commodities. Ride the wave! Sign up for the opening call risk-free today. Introducing Primal Edge. Today, it's even more important to take a supplement that complements your health. Primal Edge is specifically formulated to boost your immune system and help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Our early ancestors found all their nutritional requirements in the wild environment. But today our food sources don't contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients that we need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based, vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated humic and fulvic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They've been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, without them, life cannot exist. That's right, Ellen. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every morning. morning. Primal Edge, just $89 exclusively at TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. Hey, Mark, uh, during the break, I looked at a couple of different things for you. One... I, uh, the chart that I have on the screen is NVIDIA. NVIDIA, as of yesterday, was the number one holding inside the SOX, about 9%. And as we take a look at this chart here, this has a completed sell the D point. That actually sell the D point pattern didn't confirm until yesterday when price had gapped down. But what price also did, if we take a look at that oscillator and change line, it changed from uh, green or red to green back on April the 6th. 
just like in the case of Apple, we looked at that chart earlier, prices pulled back and tested and rejected that. This is a bullish signal. So you've got the valid top, but all the valid top does is get you back to support. If support holds, it's bullish. So at this stage here, NVIDIA, it's really neutral because you have a valid top, but you're above um, you're above resistance out here. And uh, but it's 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 bullish to neutral is what I would say. That's the first thing. The second thing is if I look at the weekly time frame chart for the socks out here, what you're going to see. So in strong bull markets, you'll get these two bar pullbacks. Sometimes it can be two days. Sometimes it can be two months. Sometimes it can be two weeks. This is the weekly chart. Just take a look at from the March 2020 level and take a look at the you're looking at the bottom figure here. One and two. It's the old Texas two step or some some type of two step, but two steps where you have lower closes below the prior bar out there and then back off to the races. You've got another one back off to the races, another one back off to the races, another one back off to the races. Well, this week is probably going to be that bar number two out there. So you've got plenty of information here to at least get into a trading position, as I see it, inside the SOX. Does that help? Yep, that's good stuff. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. And thanks for the call, and uh, have a great day. That was Mark in Fort Collins. Folks, stay tuned for two more great hours out here. You've got your favorite polar bear, David White. He's up next. Tom O'Brien to take us on home, and I'll be back with you on a thirsty and terrific Thursday. Have a wonderful Wednesday.